Got a few videos and more, and then we have a couple things we're going to show off. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I got my prototype for my TRS AT Accessibility Trinky. This is a USB plug-in board with a SAMD 21E18. So it's a Cortex M0 that can run Arduino or CircuitPython. It's got a NeoPixel and a TRRS jack. What that means is that it's a four-pole uh, eighth-inch audio jack. So you've got tip, ring one, ring two, and sleeve. Uh, and like this is just a little breakout that makes it really easy for me to prototype and test with it. And accessibility switches uh, tend to use uh, just tip and ring. They don't, they're like a mono uh, audio, but you know, it's the same size as a TRS and with the TRS you can connect multiple switches. So, you know, even without a splitter, just uh, wiring up these so that we have one button through this little like, you know, plug and play thing over here, goes to the tip and ring. And then another button goes to the other ring and the sleeve. And then I've got this plugged in here. It's got some demo code running. And then I've got some uh, circuit Python code that, um, you know, sets the non-used pins to be ground. Oh, sorry, sets them to be ground. Um, and then it uses the keypad on the tip and the ring too. And whenever it detects a pressed event, it can write with HID. So if I open up uh, notepad here and I press these buttons, You'll see as I press them, one button says hello, and then you know the other button says A. And so you can customize. You can have it even have it do mouse stuff or like complicated, uh, you know, multi-line uh, text inputs. So it can be really good for easily customizable accessibility stuff. And here's the best part: no soldering is required. It's like you can plug and play everything. This plugs right in, and then you can use terminal blocks with just a screwdriver to add uh, up to four switches. So I don't know. It's gonna be kind of cool. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, this is our Ethernet feathering, which is a really popular add-on board that allows you to add Ethernet to any of our feather boards. Uh, and it has a WizNet, uh, I think it's like a WWIZ5500 mag jack. And we had to test it. And the best way to test it is to actually send and receive Ethernet data. But um, one thing I've noticed is not uh, everyone who is testing the boards always has like an ethernet jack near them. Like sometimes they're a couple feet away and they don't want to get like a 50 foot cable. So I was like, oh, instead of plugging into our router at Adafruit, let me make it like a standalone ethernet testing jig. So I've got here is a Metro 328, like Arduino compatible with an ethernet shield. And then I've got this, what is this? This is a crossover connector. So it turns an ethernet cable into a crossover, which means you can connect point to point. And then I've got code running on both of these. Uh, right now, they're just checking if the Ethernet cable is connected. And what, the, what it does is it sends a, a UDP packet to a broadcast address. And then when it gets a response, you know, it prints out the response and it sends a like, hello. And then it gets back, you know, world and that how we know it works. So if you see here, as I plug in the cable, it um, sends a UDP packet. And then over here, you know, this flew by. But it responded with uh, the contents world when it got a packet of hello. And that's how we know that we have full bidirectional communication working on Ethernet. So now we don't need a separate router. But this is also a really handy uh, thing to do if you just have like two Arduino boards or microcontroller boards and you want to have like a really good connection between them um, that's better than serial and can go, you know, hundreds and hundreds of feet. Uh, Ethernet is a great option. And of course, we've got feather wings and shields available. Just don't forget that crossover connector. Oh, right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, I just got my prototypes for the Pixel Trinky in, and I'm ready to test them out. So this is an at SAMD 21E18. So it's a uh, Cortex M0, 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. And basically, I just have a little level shifter here. You can see it's a, a dual shifter that'll shift from 5 volts, um, sorry, the 3 volt signal to up to 5 volts. And then over here, I've got uh, a ground, a 5 volt output from the USB and then a data and clock pin. And what this is for is like really easy uh, driving of either two NeoPixel strands or one dot star strand. And uh, the clock and data are on an SPI port. So you can do dot stars really, really fast too for, um, you know, if you want really fast updates for your pixels. Uh, you can also, of course, do your standard NeoPixels um, from five volts and you can do it in CircuitPython or Arduino. So just like a really easy, simple plug and play, no soldering. You know, there's little terminal blocks so you can quickly uh, connect your wires up. 
uh, without any soldering or tools. And uh, I think it'll make it really easy to make computer controlled, uh, colorful light effects. All right, what's this? Oh, this is um, a rendering of the uh, Pixel Chunky. Showed off. And what's this? This is a tripler um, for Pico Bells because I'm doing a lot of Pico Bells. And this one, um, it basically expands the doubler and then adds a uh, iSpy connector. So you can like connect uh, e-ink or TFT displays, like pretty much TFT displays um, very easily and a NeoPixel. Um, so uh, I got prototype PCBs yesterday. So hopefully we'll get this together. I think this will be popular because you can have a Pico and then two add-ons. Top secret. Back in the vault.